Every year, Nation's Restaurant News names a new class of Menu Masters Award winners. They represent the most innovative restaurant chefs behind game-changing menu items. In our last video, we introduced you to our award winners and their noteworthy dishes. Now, it's time to put them to the test. We've invited them to Providence, Rhode Island, where they'll collaborate to create a never-before-seen menu, a menu that will be served at the Menu Masters Celebration this May. This series will capture the cook-off starting with their journey. Let's tune in. Menu Masters, what's going on? Matt Schweitzer from Hot Dotty Burger Bar in the great state of Texas. Flying out to Rhode Island right now. Coffee, coffee. Rise and shine. One of the advantages of traveling in the morning is the word fresh. You have the fresh smiles of the employees, fresh food. Everybody has a fresh personalities because it's just 5 a.m. And I'm on my way to the beautiful Providence, Rhode Island, to Johnson Wells University to participate in this amazing event. Ah, oh, good. Tomatoes, nice and ripe. It's the calm before the storm here at Johnson and Wales University. This is where our menu masters will collaborate to create extraordinary dishes. Chef TJ Delidon, the assistant dean at the university's culinary school, is doing his final prep to ensure the pantry is fit for our kings. Now, what we haven't mentioned yet is that these chefs are facing a lot of unknowns right now. The cook-off will see them working in groups with fellow chefs they never met, and will assign them a theme that will define the type of dish we want them to create. Um, and they'll have about five hours to produce it, but that's not hard, right? Five hours is a very short time. There isn't a chef I know who doesn't like to be prepared. Chef Paul Fiorentino understands the challenges of menu creation. It's what he does for Ventura Foods as a VP of culinary, a role that sees him developing new recipes with Ventura brands, which are later recreated inside professional kitchens. Ventura Foods is a sponsor of the Menu Masters Celebration, where the restaurant industry gathers every year to honor the top menu innovators. The chefs traveling here today are the 2023 winners, and here to tell us more about these chefs are members of Nation's Restaurant News' editorial team, Sam Okus and Brett Thorne. Great to see you guys. So, Sam, Nation's Restaurant News plays a key role in selecting these chefs. What stuck out to you about these chefs this year? Yeah, I would say, I mean, most of these winners, there are some familiar functions going on here, some familiar items, but these chefs have taken it to another level. I mean, one of the winter, winners, for example, is Friendly's. They have Frico on one of their burgers, which is like a, a griddled piece of cheese. Same thing for the cauliflower side at um, uh, the Habit Burger Grill, because again, here's a, a QSR company, you know, these major burgers and fries chains, you expect to see burgers and fries and that's it. So when you see something like the cauliflower side that they've put on their menu, it's different. And the Habit Burger Grill's uh, non-fried sides, like the garlic cauliflower that they introduced last year, actually sell pretty well. I mean, they don't sell as well as french fries because, come on, they're french fries. Right. Now, Johnson & Wales University is one of the top culinary programs in the United States with a long history of notable alumni, among them being Chef Emeril Lagasse, who also happens to be a Menu Masters Award winner, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2006. I think for me what's most exciting is that our students see that the way we're training them to think in our labs is exactly how really accomplished industry professionals think too. Dean Jason Evans oversees a culinary program here at Johnson & Wales, which as you can see is filled with busy days. So our junior and senior level uh, curricula are really designed around creation and mystery baskets. It's a glimpse into the pressure, passion, and perfectionism that drives the culinary community. So much of the food that people eat, more than 50%, is eaten away from home. So what they're doing at restaurants really does define what people are eating. We're now back 
back in the kitchen with Chef TJ, getting a look at what our menu masters have to work with. Absolutely, I am so excited to show you around the kitchen, Diana. Um, first off, they have uh, dual wok stations, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully we can see some stir frying. The BTUs coming off these burners are outrageous. Um, of course, we have our double fryer here. Six burners on this side and a char broiler. And then we got the pizza oven here. Uh, I'll get this thing fired up to about 800 degrees for, for flatbreads. Um, all of our meats, all of our proteins, all of our cold produce and our dairy will be in the regions here. Um, and this is fun. Maybe we'll get to make some, uh, some naan today, maybe some uh, tandoori chicken in the tandoor oven. This thing's pretty fun. 100% um, oh, okay. clay inside and gets super, super hot. Tons of firepower on this side of the lab too. Wow, well, when we say limitless, clearly this is the kitchen to do it in. That's it, <laughs> absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Now it's all quiet here inside this kitchen, but what's happening on this bus? A very different scene as the chefs make their way to Johnson & Wales. Let's turn to our chef cam for a closer look. Looking forward to collaborating with a lot of, with somebody from a you know, different concept. I'm looking to see how crazy can crazy get. It. We got sabotage, that's what I'm doing. More on that later. As for now, the timers are set, the kitchen is ready, the action starts now. See y'all soon.